Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and last Monday I got another box in the mail from Korea. Those of you who saw my videos over the summer may remember the pen that I got from Eureka Pens, the Eureka Symmetry, which I dunked in Bay State Blue. This box is from the same company, but I'm even more excited about this pen. And here it is, having arrived in this purple pen sleeve. Inside we have this. The Eureka Asymmetry Diamond Cap, Dodecagon in Ebonite. From the first glance, it's pretty clear that this pen is made with the same precision and quality as the Eureka Symmetry. Here you can see that the symmetry tapers at both ends and has rounded caps, while the asymmetry tapers at the end of the body, but the cap does not, and both ends of the pen are flat. But take a look at this matte finish ebonite. It's gorgeous. I was really expecting something a little bit more like my Indian ebonite fountain pens, like this green Gamma pen or this FPR Treveni, which are really pretty in their own way, but this Eureka pen has a decidedly more high-end feel to it. The Runga Abhimanyu Grand also has a matte finish, but it's different. It appears just to be unpolished, while the Eureka has a velvety, uniform microtexture. And this ebonite base color is a nice bright green, although along with the black, the impression is a little more olive when you view it from a distance. And I don't have any other ebonites this color. And as I mentioned earlier, the ends of this pen are flat. But what really makes this pen unique is the diamond pattern that's machined into the cap. Making these facets requires a pretty impressive amount of machining, probably on something like a CNC lathe. But in any case, the effect is sort of mesmerizing as you rotate the pen in the light. Each row of diamonds catches the light and then just as quickly returns to the shade as the next row catches the light. Very cool. If I really magnify these facets, you can see the tooling marks from the surfaces being cut. And these fine lines are also what gives this pen its uniform matte finish. Let me see if I can see it on the body of this pen too. Yeah, I think this should come across on camera. So I'm gonna put a little strip of tape on the pen cap here for reference. Okay. And now you can see that the cap unscrews from the body in one, then about three quarters turns. And here's the end of the cap, which has the Eureka light bulb logo engraved on it. And from the top here, you can also get a better idea of the dodecagon shape of the cap. A dodecagon is a polygon with 12 sides. Beneath the cap, we can see the black grip section, which is fairly long and narrow. It's 30 millimeters long and 11.7 millimeters in diameter, tapering down to 10.7 millimeters towards the nib before it flares out. And if you look closely, you can see that it also has that fine texture so that it doesn't feel slippery between your fingers. And here again, you can see those precision cut cap threads, which are fine enough to be comfortable if you happen to grip them, although it's not likely that you will with such a long grip section. And that brings us to the nib. This pen comes with a two-tone Bach nib, and as you should be able to see here, it has a custom finish to match the body of the pen. Eureka is now offering a few different nib finishes the plain polished steel nibs, blasted nibs that have a uniform matte texture media blasted into the nib, and then there's the micro-blasted finish, which provides a finish that has a finer texture, but also retains gold plating on the two-tone nibs. And that is what I have here. I don't know whether I'd want this finish on every nib that I own, but with the matte finish of this pen, it looks absolutely perfect. 
I'm really impressed with how good this looks, and now I want to get one of those regular blasted nibs too. You may also notice that the tines on this nib are not too tight, so the ink should flow pretty well, but we'll get to that shortly. Flipping this over, you can see that this pen has a standard plastic feed. This pen is also available with a custom-made ebonite feed. I think it costs about $25 extra. You'll see them on the Eureka website, but they're currently sold out. But for me, there are no problems with this plastic feed. So let me just go ahead and show you how this pen writes. I'm going to use this green tag stationery ink that was exclusive to the Tsutaya bookstore in Ginza, Tokyo. I'll start off on some Midori paper. This nib doesn't have any indication of what size the tip is, and I don't think that I ever specified what I wanted, but this feels like a medium to me, but it might be broad. In any case, it's as smooth as you'd expect from any well-polished Bach nib, and this one is well-polished. And as you can hopefully see, this nib is nice and wet, too. And here's a quick sample on Cosmo Air Snow, too, where it feels more like a broad nib, but everything feels a little bit broader on Cosmo. This is a pretty medium-sized pen, and it's really comfortable in my hand without the cap posted. And as I mentioned before, the grip is long enough to accommodate a variety of different grip positions. But this pen also does post. Not terribly deeply, maybe three quarters of an inch, but it is secure. The pen is pretty long with the cap posted, but even though the cap isn't all that heavy, I wouldn't want to write with it like this for a long time. It's great though for those times when you need to write a brief note and just want to stick the cap somewhere to keep track of it. The asymmetry is very slightly longer and about a millimeter narrower than the symmetry. And the grip sections are shaped a little differently as well. But what I really wanted to show you here is the difference in the finish of the nibs. This matte finish just looks so classy. For size comparison, here's the Eureka next to a Twisby Eco and a Lamy All Star. And here it is next to a Jinhao 100 and a Click Aristocrat. This pen is a little more expensive than the Symmetry, but it's not too bad for a pen of this quality. The Asymmetry costs $75 plus shipping, but I'm not sure whether the finish on the nib will cost extra. The same pen is also available with a custom ebonite feed, as I mentioned earlier, for about $100, depending on how you pay. And I think that's about it for this pen, but let me know down in the comments section if you have any questions about it, or anything else. My Inkvent calendar arrived last week, so I'm getting excited to start working on those videos, and I think that I'll have at least one very different but interesting video just before those start. So if you're not subscribed, this is a good time to do it, and I hope that you'll take a second to click that like button down there. It's a huge help for small channels like this one. And that's it. Stay safe out there, everyone, and I'll see you next time.